Hi guys, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you me doing um, me runner bean reveal. I'm going to be picking them, and uh, I'm going to show you a few of them. I'm even going to get a tape measure on a few of them as well. Unfortunately, the bigger ones disappeared, but then that's um, all down to my fault. I did tell me mate you could take them, and I I didn't realise I'd, I'd not done a, a video of these the bigger ones. However, the ones what we we did a we we took were pretty big, to, so it doesn't really matter. It were bigger than the ones we did last year, anyway. I'd like to measure the really big ones, but I'll show you that in a moment. Um, first things first. Um, like I say, we come on this morning. It was very misty. Um, I noticed one of the trees has started to change its colours. Autumn's on its way. Have a look at this here, guys. I don't know if you can see that over there, but this morning, a bit earlier, it was like pea soup on here. And this is the first time um, we've had um, mist on the allotments this year. Uh, as you can see over there, the the tree, which is uh, full of different colours, um, we're very close to autumn now. It's uh, closing in really fast and all these dahlias and what have you will all be dying out very shortly I'll be lifting them or just covering them over with horse manure but yep autumn's well and truly starting to take a grip now and uh, next couple of weeks all these trees along here they'll all be golden browns and yellows and what have you there you go well, that's an awesome sight, isn't it? A, a web, uh, it's about 10 foot up high in a tree and the morning dew's settled on it and uh, as you can clearly see, a wonderful pattern there. A lattice work uh, done by the humble little spider. So as I was saying there, um, it's the first tree to get its leaves and it's the first tree to lose its leaves. Did you notice that cobweb there full of the dew? Well, that's what it was like this morning, completely covered everywhere in dew. So you can't really, if you you know, you, you work it walking around, you're just getting wet, basically. Everything was soaking, but like I say, it's rained, It's dr the sun's been out for the last hour or so, and it's um, pretty much dried up everywhere. My beds are, are looking good, they're not waterlogged like they used to be. So that's a win-win. I did notice I've got um, a couple of red strawberries there. I've got actually got flowers on my strawberries this time of year. This second um, flowering, and uh, yeah, got a little strawberry. Let's show you the strawberry. You've got, more, got strawberries here. Look at these. And uh, we've got a lot more strawberries as well. Look at all these flowers here on the on the my strawberries. I missed the pot out there. I'm gonna have to take that pot and get rid of it. And I've got, I might have replaced that strawberry there, it's not looking too good, but all the other strawberries are, are wonderful as you can see. 50 strawberries in this bed, and uh, yeah, we've got strawberries there, so a load of flowers. So we'll get a few more strawberries out of these this year. Well, there's actually others there, um, the, the peckles have fallen off now, and the strawberries are um, ripening, so who knows, we'll probably get a couple more punnets of strawberries before the end of it. But yeah, the first strawberry was just starting to go red. Um, I do read my posts and I, I forget who it was and it says you've been very lucky with your greenhouses this year Mark not getting blight not like me well um, at, right at the very death in the, the middle greenhouse I got a touch of blight but we, we got all the tomatoes out so it didn't really matter however we still got the outside tomatoes and I was looking at my tomatoes yesterday and um, shock horror yes the dreaded blight but then I realised, I was just looking at my next door neighbour's um, plot and I've seen her tomatoes and they're full of it and it's only like 12 foot away from my outside tomatoes so you know, do the maths, 12 foot, wind carries the spores, flies, bees, everything touches them and they're on the they're on, on the tomatoes. So let me show you my neighbour's tomatoes, show you what blight looks like. That's what blight looks like guys, it's absolutely devastating devastated uh, this this bed um, everywhere you look or oh, every tomato has got it on it all the stems are completely um, black 
and affects it and uh, the, it smells absolutely rancid to be quite honest with you you're downwind of it it smells horrible and this is uh, what's um, basically um, wipes my tomatoes out so that was hers they look pretty bad don't they well this is mine they're just they're just starting the um, the actual stems now to darken so have a you look can at see this. there's the tomato there's the tomatoes just starting to ripen here guys and there's loads of tomatoes all along here the only trouble is if you look down here you can see the blight on the stems and there's nothing I can do about that so we're gonna we will be taking these up one day in the week and they'll all be going to the um, the tip we'll try and save the tomatoes what we can and um, well unfortunately uh, it's that time of year it's very it's very wet and um, blight thrives on these sort of um, this sort of environment unfortunately now, did you notice the fruit ripening there so we might get away with it if they don't ripen we can still we can take them off and we can ripen them um, at home on the windowsill or in a drawer um, or we can even use the green ones to make chutney so it's no big no not a problem really um, anyway yep bloody blight so them ones all them tomatoes there will be going to sip I know you can put them in the compost bin and you can rot them down and um, the blight would die off for next year but I don't I, I don't want anything like that on my plot so it's off to Cobden Street to get rid of them um, anyway moving on to the, the the runner beans now I've got two wigwams full of beans and he had some really big ones and my mate come over a few days back and said is it alright we have some beans Matt now I would have thought he would have left the big ones but no he took the bloody big ones didn't he so my own fault I should have done the video sooner I would have given him the bloody beans I just wanted to measure them anyway he must have missed um, a few a few of the really big ones uh, or the bigger ones um, but not the ones what I there was one there clearly over 20 inches long um, not as big as the ones um, f uh, on the video what um, Dan from Allotment Diaries did um, from Arrogate I mean there was 30 odd inches I've never seen anything as big but these ones was um, you know up to 20 it was over 20 inches anyway and um, let me show you me harvesting one or two of them now and um, we'll show we'll get the tape measure out in another bit of a clip I've got and we'll measure them see how big we got them to okay so uh, well, guys. here they come <laughs> I was just about to start picking these beans when my mates just brought me um, an egg and bacon butty over. It's nice of him, isn't it? Um, and it's appreciated uh, this this time of morning. I say it's very misty today. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to eat this first. Then we're going to pop back and. Uh, We'll start picking a few of these. See what we end up with, eh? Okay, guys. Uh, after having that egg and bacon, we're back, and uh, we're back picking some of these. And like I say, there's some really big ones. Yeah, I'm just picking all the bigger, biggish ones. Oh dear. Whew. Yeah, I'll be picking a few of these which have uh, gone brown for seeds, obviously. And, uh, well. Not bad, not bad at all. There's some really nice ones there. At least 14 inches long 
well, I don't know how big these trays are, so whatever this tray is, but there's a couple in there which bend round the tray, so I'd say they're 14 inches, but uh, not a bad all. And these absolutely piles on there. I have been telling my neighbours to take them, and they have been doing so, you know. But uh, these ones here for my next door neighbour, because I know she likes them. So there we go. There me are uh, some of my runner beans. And don't they look nice? I don't know if you can see these clearly enough, but uh, let's just see if I can move it around a little bit better. Um, we're just measuring the length of these uh, runner beans and uh, 16 inches them ones are. That one there's probably about 17 inches. That's got this bent there with a big bend in it and it's at 16 inches. And the others are around 15, 15 and a half inches long there. And then we've got a pile in there as well, so. Yeah, the average, averaging about 16 inches, 15, 16 inches is runner beans, so that's not bad. I'm quite happy with that. So as you see, uh, see there, 16, 17, that bigger one, the one that was bent, that was clearly 17 inches long. And uh, we did have bigger ones, but hey-ho. And there was quite a lot of them there, all over 12 inches long and um, varying from 12 to, to 17 inches. So I think we did really well, and there's still another couple of harvests on there. I will be giving them to my neighbour, uh, Connie. Um, what, what it is with Connie, she's got a nail on a on a fence on the top of a fence, and what I do is I hang, get a bag and I hang it on the top, over the, put it over the fence and hang it on this nail for her. She comes and she takes them. She loves um, loves the veg uh, that I give her, and what she does, she puts another bag this side with cakes in it for me. So uh, we both uh, benefit from it, and she makes some really cool cakes as well. Nice girl she is. She's in her in her in her eighties, and uh, yeah, very good cook. So them them runner beans there are for um, for for my friend Connor. Anyway, uh, the last thing I want to show you is uh, a friend of mine comes running over. He says, "Mark, Mark," he said, "there's a there's a, an hedgehog caught in, a, in in one of these live traps." I said, "Well, open the bloody thing and let it out." He said, oh no, it might bite me. I said, it's more frightened of you, isn't it? Is it the bloody, the, you know, a view of it, or vice versa? And I said, where is it? Anyway, we went up, and uh, there it was, big fat thing stuck in the trap. So I took it out, I put it in a plant pot, and here it is. Well, guys, look what I've got here. An hedgehog. <laughs> and it's a big fat hedgehog as well. I've just rescued it from... Um, one of these rat traps or um, some of the lads um, on the allotments uh, must have put a couple of rat traps out to catch the rats anyway I've just found this uh, poor little hedgehog here and it's really really stressed and um, well we're gonna let it go on the plot and the best place to let it go is where I let the last one go so uh, let's go down there now and, and let him out or her okay out. so there's there's a little devil and uh, this is where we released it. Well guys, uh, Mr Hedgehog, um, or Mrs Hedgehog, is still in the pot. We just brought him down to the back part of the pot where we, we let the last one go. And uh, let's see what happens. We'll leave the camera rolling. <laughs> there it goes guys, sorry about the dodgy camera work, but that's wonderful, I always love seeing wild animals um, returning back to where they're supposed to be, that's a win-win for me that, I'm really chuffed about that, yeah the poor little bugger was caught in one of these traps here, 
Um, not them, this trap, um, obviously, it was uh, on someone else's plot. And uh, anyway, it's been released, so that's the end of it. Well, as you see, it took off like lightning. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. It's uh, back of my plot, and um, the more the merrier them around my, my plot, eating all the slugs. And um, I don't see many slugs on my plot as uh, like other people do. And it's, I think it's down to the, um, the hedgehogs. And from time to time, I put a little bit of cat food down at the bottom there for them as well. So, and it does disappear. Although then that could be the bloody rats. Um, and that's another thing um, what we've been doing. We've been putting some rat poison down. Let me show you where where, where I've been putting it. I'm just putting some rat poison down here. I've just noticed they've actually dug an hole here, coming up because I've been putting the food here. They've literally put an hole here so they can come up. So what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cover it like that and uh, leave it running for a, for about 10 minutes or so and see if we can catch any of them. Well as you can see it's in the compost bin itself, that's where they are and um, last thing I want is rats near me chickens and uh, the rats can't get into me chickens um, but we don't want them anywhere near them. Um, and this time of year the rats will be nesting in the, the compost bin so it's always wise to to, to put a bit of poison down um, there is lids on top of my compost bin so there's no birds can actually get at that seed um, it's uh, completely um, sealed off from the only thing what can get in there are the rats so um, like I say we need to keep them under control I did notice the squirrels uh, down on my me, me plot there the other day I caught them um, pinching some of my corn I still got a few um, few corn left there, but the 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 the, the, the later variety I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but the incredible F ones uh, we saw already you've seen them. They was pretty good. Well, these ones are a different um, a different um, sweet corn, and there's not many of them left. Like I said, they're being attacked by the wind, and the bloody squirrels are, are having a dig at them as well. Um, so if there's any when we come to it I'll show them you so um, that's it really for this one I hope you enjoyed the the, the look at the the runner beans and like I say little edge jog there being released and it's just a pity about the tomatoes but they're starting to ripen and it's not it's not too bad the blight at the moment it is getting there so we're gonna have to do something with them and we've got the other ones down here as well. They've got slight, um, slight bit of blight on them as well. So I'll be seeing you all. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, folks.